intermittent fasting is gonna kill you. What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about intermittent fasting. Is it gonna give you a heart attack? But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So this comes about because as of the filming of this video yesterday, I started to get a bunch of DMs from people sending me a news story talking about a new study that showed that intermittent fasting could increase your risk of death from heart disease by 91%. I want to give a couple of caveats real quick. One, I have not read the full study because the full study has not been published. This was an abstract presented at the American Heart Association conference. And so it has not gone through peer review. It has not been published. I cannot see the full study, but I wanna go ahead and comment on it a little bit based on what I do know. So they examined in Haines data from 2003 until 2018. Now in Haines is a big repository of data they keep where they look at questionnaires in terms of food frequency intake and those sorts of things. Now this data has been used to put together a bunch of different studies in terms of cohort data. And it was about 50-50 men to women and I believe that the average follow-up time was about seven years. Now they basically found that people who confined their food intake to eight hours or less feeding window did have an increased risk of death from cardiovascular disease by 91%. They also found that people who already had cardiovascular disease still had a 66% elevated risk additionally from death of cardiovascular disease who followed intermittent fasting compared to just regular meal feeding. Additionally, people who had cancer had a greater risk of cardiovascular disease death if they were confining their feeding window to less than eight hours. And they found no benefits for intermittent fasting on improving mortality across the board. So now what does this all mean? Because it's just an abstract. I can't look at how they examine the data. So what do I feel comfortable talking about? Because from the time that this abstract gets published to when this thing goes through peer review and is actually published could be six to 12 months. These things take time. I don't wanna just leave this out there on social media where people can go crazy with it, but I also can't really break it down in depth. But here's what I'll say. Here's some of the limitations to the study. The first limitation is this is based on food recall questionnaires, which we know aren't always accurate. That being said, they, they can be inaccurate, but they tend to be relatively reliable, and it was with 20,000 people. The next thing is intermittent fasting didn't really get popular until like, I don't know, after 2010. So I think many of these people who were confining their feeding windows to less than eight hours weren't doing so purposefully. I don't even know if they were necessarily following intermittent fasting purposefully. What could explain this is that people who were eating less frequently were eating bigger meals and actually possibly overeating. Now, I don't know if they looked at BMI. I don't know if they standardized for that. I don't know if they standardized for exercise. I don't know what kind of covariates they used. But if we do look at another recent study that looked at continuous meal feeding versus basically intermittent fasting, where they're confining their feeding window to less than eight hours a day, they saw actually increased BMI. So the people who were limiting their feeding window actually were more likely to have a greater BMI. And we know that greater BMI can contribute to the risk of heart disease. Now, how could this be possible? How is intermittent fasting causing this? Well, again, we have to keep in mind that with these sort of cohort studies, reverse causality can also be true, which is, people who tend to be more prone to heart disease may have worse overall eating behaviors and that may also include not having regular meal feeding. Additionally, I'm just not sure what the mechanism would be for causing increased cardiovascular disease if calories were equated, right? So these studies, they're observational in nature. They're not having people eat the same amount of calories necessarily. If I had to hazard a guess, and I'm, I am guessing here, is that we're probably looking at some sort of reverse causality. Now you guys know me, I'm not a big proponent of intermittent fasting. I mean, I think it's a useful tool for some people to restrict calories, but do I think it's magic? No, and quite frankly, there's a lot of insane claims out there around it. But do I think that it independently is gonna give you heart disease? No, I do not. And there is another systematic review out there showing that intermittent fasting, if it puts you in a calorie restriction, can improve 
your levels of triglycerides, your LDL cholesterol, and improve a lot of risk factors for cardiovascular disease, like insulin sensitivity and those sorts of things. So again, if we look at the most tightly controlled research, the human randomized control trials, we see improvements in the markers of cardiovascular disease risk with people who do intermittent fasting. Now, it doesn't appear to be better than regular calorie restriction when calories are equated between groups. So if you want to do intermittent fasting, I'm not worried about it. I don't think it's going to give you a heart attack or anything like that. I mean, again, I'll want to see what the follow-up research is to this. I'll want to see how this study was conducted so I can have a better idea of it. But there are a lot of people out there who believe that fasting has been shown to increase longevity, that this is somehow a fact. There is zero human data to support this. And there's really only one animal study to support this. And it was in mice where they equated calories, but they had one group doing fasting and another group not. But the fasting, in, if you standardize to the life of a mouse, ends up being like a month, okay? So I don't really know what to make of that data. And mice models are typically poor models for longevity, for assessing longevity, because rodents are very different than primates and humans in that rodents continue to grow throughout the course of their life, whereas humans and primates tend to reach a cap around age 20, 25. So do I think intermittent fasting is gonna give you a heart attack? I do not. But do I think it's superior for longevity? I do not. If you like intermittent fasting because it's easy for you, you can hit your calorie requirements, you can place yourself in a calorie deficit or maintenance or whatever your goal is, and you can be consistent with it, then I think intermittent fasting is a great tool for a lot of people. But it's not magic, and there's no data to support it's superior for longevity. And if anything, right now, the human data we do have suggests it might be inferior. But again, I have to wait to see that. And I am just not very convinced that it's an effective intermittent fasting. I think that there are probably multiple confounding variables that explain this. Again, I am not a slave to any one type of diet. I'm not a zealot about any one type of diet. I am a diet agnostic, which is why my app, Carbon Diet Coach, we don't force you into any one style of dieting. We look at your individual metabolism, your individual goals, and your individual dietary preferences, and we let you pick your meal frequency. You can adjust your meal frequency. So if you wanna do intermittent fasting, you wanna do low carb, you wanna do low fat, you wanna do, you can do whatever you want with Carbon Diet Coach. We focus on the stuff that matters, the appropriate amount of calorie intake for your goals, and adequate protein to support those goals. If you're interested in Carbon Diet Coach, it's less than $10 a month, Click the link in the description and I'll catch you guys next week.